Hey, I'm Drew. I'm Jonathan. And we're gonna show you how to get a seamless look for your wallpaper. We're using Scott Living's self-adhesive wallpaper today, which is super easy to install, and you can even remove it afterward if you wanna adjust it without leaving a sticky residue. Now, it helps if you have a smooth, dry, clean wall, so you might wanna have some painting done before installing the wallpaper. In that case, you should also allow a month between painting and hanging wallpaper so the paint can fully dry and cure. Another helpful note before you get started, make sure you check all the lot and pattern numbers so that they match. Also check that you have sufficient rolls to complete the job, allowing for design repeat. A typical roll covers about 30 square feet. So once you're ready, the good news about this wallpaper is that you don't need many tools. Here we have a tape measure, a level, a pencil, a utility knife. Then we wanna have a straight edge because that's gonna be important. And then we also have the plastic smoothing tool. You can find that online or at the hardware store. And then you also wanna have a ladder. Now an important note as we get started, if you're hanging wallpaper on any wall that has switches or sockets, you need to switch off the main power at the electrical panel. Once you've done that, unscrew any switch or outlet covers and you can set them to the side. Okay, let's begin. Take out your pencil and draw a straight vertical line using your level 20 inches from the left-hand side of your wall. This is your guide strip, the very first one, so it has to be straight. Okay, now you're ready to hang your first strip. Peel off about 12 inches of the backing and apply the front sheet to the top of the wall, allowing a bit of excess to overlap the ceiling. You don't wanna stretch the material because that can cause gaps between the wallpaper seams over time. We recommend placing the roll on the floor and then pulling the paper up towards the ceiling. You can pre-cut the strip, but then the paper is gonna to wanna to roll up the wall a little bit. So just make sure you have another pair of hands to help you, and then you're gonna trim it. All right, now align the right side of the strip to your line and press it to the wall. Working from top to bottom, pull the backing away as you evenly press the paper to the wall. If you see any bubbles, use the plastic smoother to push the bubbles out. Once your first strip is on the wall, trim excess along the top and the bottom of the strip using a straight edge and sharp utility knife. Your first strip is done. After that, you'll want to focus on matching the pattern with the next strip. You might need to move the paper up and down the wall to find where it matches, which might increase the amount of excess paper to trim off the top. Don't throw it away though, it's perfect for other projects like maybe a shelf lining or bookcases or craft projects. Now that we've matched our pattern, we'll overlay just a little bit, even just one tick of your measuring tape, because this paper is going to want to shrink a little and we don't want to have gaps between the strips. Next, we'll continue installing the paper down the wall, smoothing out any air bubbles as we go, and trimming off the excess paper at the top and bottom, Then we'll keep going piece by piece. Now, remember how we told you to take off those switch and socket covers? Well, if you come across any open fixtures, wallpaper over it, then carefully slice around the sockets and switches and tear the paper away. Remember, the main power must be switched off. Then reinstall your switch and outlet covers, and then you're done. Ah, but Drew, what if you had to remove the wallpaper at some point in the future? Well, Jonathan, I'm very glad that you asked. To remove Scott Living's self-adhesive wallpaper, just slowly pull the edge from the top corner of each strip downward. Again, it helps if you've installed the wallpaper on a smooth, dry, clean wall. That's it. 